Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hustle for That Muscle webinar. I'm Jess, and I'm an intern here at Gator Care Wellness. I am also a senior at the University of Florida. I'm studying applied physiology and kinesiology with a specialization in fitness and wellness. So I'm basically studying human movement and the effects of exercise on the body. I'm very passionate about fitness, so I hope you guys are eager to learn about building muscle and just getting started in the gym. I just wanted to preface and say that it is April, so it's been three months since the new year, and typically by month three, New Year's resolutions start to fade. Research has actually shown that 95% of New Year's resolutions are fitness related. However, by month three, by April, only 10% of people believe their fitness resolution will stick. And this is because a lot of times fitness resolutions do not have structure and people do not know how to properly structure a workout for their goals. So that is why I'm here today to talk to you guys about how to structure a workout for building muscle and how to eat right for the best results. So let's get right into it and talk about some of the objectives we are going to highlight today. I also want to let you guys know that there will be a digital packet sent out. And the slides will also be in the follow up email. First, we're going to talk about the benefits of resistance training. Then we're going to talk about some of the training goals. We're going to touch on diet. Diet's more discussed in the digital packet. I'll have like a lot of information on like tips and some like grab and goes at the supermarket that you could get. And then we're going to mostly focus on how to structure a resistance workout for building muscle and losing body fat. So there are a lot of benefits when it comes to resistance training. The one that we're really going to talk about today is decreasing body fat. And this happens because when you build muscle, your RMR, which is your resting metabolic rate, increases. And that is the amount of calories you burn at rest. So when your RMR increases, you burn more calories. And this is known as the afterburn effect. It also improves your mental health by decreasing anxiety and decreasing depressive symptoms. It increases your sense of well-being by boosting your mood and increasing your self-esteem. It prevents or controls chronic conditions like diabetes, obesity, heart disease, osteoporosis. It prevents and controls osteoporosis by increasing bone density and strength. It enhances your brain health by improving, it, improving your cognitive function and focus. And then lastly, it increases energy levels. So now that we went over benefits, Let's talk about the training goals of a resistance workout. So there are four different training goals and they all kind of intertwine. That's why I want to discuss them, but we're mainly going to focus on hypertrophy. But the other ones are muscular endurance, muscular strength, and muscular power. Hypertrophy is the increase in muscle mass. So when we're going to focus on the training goal, we're obviously going to focus on the one that is going to produce muscle mass, which is hypertrophy. They all can produce muscle mass, but for the best results and the best outcome, you want to have a hypertrophy-focused workout. So how is a hypertrophy-focused resistance workout structured? Well, you need to take into consideration a couple of variables like repetition, set, frequency, intensity, and rest. First, let's start with reps. What is a rep? Well, let me demonstrate it. Reps is short in word for repetition. But say we're doing bicep, bicep curls and we want to do four repetitions of a bicep curl. You are going to start off like this. So ready? That is one repetition. That is two repetitions. That is three repetitions. And that is four repetitions. So that is what a repetition is. So when you want a hypertrophy-focused workout, a workout aiming for muscle growth, you are going to want to do 6 to 12 repetitions. As you can see in the chart, if you were to have other training goals like muscular endurance, power, or strength, you can have hypertrophy in those other muscle, um, those other training goals. However, the best results and best outcome will be in that 6 to 12 rep range. With reps, we also have sets. So let me demonstrate a set before we go into how many sets you need for a hypertrophy-focused workout. So say we're doing three sets of two repetitions. This is what it would look like. Okay, we're going to start one repetition, two repetitions, and that is one set. We're going to take a rest, and I'll talk about rest in the next, in the next slide. 
but that will be our first set. Now we took a rest and we're gonna go into the second set of two repetitions. So one repetition, two repetitions, and that is our second set. Now I'm gonna take a rest. And now I'm gonna go into my third set after the rest. So ready? One repetition, two repetitions, and that is my third set. So that was three sets of two repetitions. When you are focusing on a muscle building workout, you want to do three to six sets. However, it has been shown that four to six sets has 80 to 85% more growth. I do think if you're a beginner just getting started, it is perfectly fine to start with three sets, but I do suggest transitioning into the four to six set range. Now the rest interval is what I was talking about in between the sets, like that rest period. When you are focusing on a hypertrophy focused workout, you want to be in the 30 to 90 second rest interval. Typically, I do one minute rest intervals, but it does depend on my energy level. Say I'm more tired that day, I'm going to take that 90 seconds. Or say I have more energy, I'm going to take that 30 seconds. It just depends how you're feeling, but you want to be in that 30 to 90 second rest interval between sets. So I have three sets. I'm going to do my first set. After I'm done, I'm going to take a minute rest, do my second set, take a minute rest, do my third set, and then move on to my next exercise. Another variable is intensity. This one is a lot of information, and I'm going to tell you guys the textbook way of measuring intensity, and then my way, which is most people's way, because it's more reasonable way to do it. This way it takes more time. It's more, it's a lot more to it. But intensity is basically just how much you're lifting, like the weight you're lifting. If you're doing the textbook way, you're going to want to do 67 to 85% of your 1RM. 1RM is your one repetition maximum. So it's how much you can lift in one repetition. So say I'm doing bicep curls, my one rep maximum, this is just a guess, but it probably would be like 30 pounds. I'd probably be able to do 30 pounds. And then finish the rep with like just enough energy, but I would unable to do another rep. That is your one repetition. It's how much you can lift for one repetition only. As you can tell, there is a range from 67 to 85%. And that is because as you increase your repetitions, you decrease your percent of one RM. So say we're doing the six to 12 rep range. At six repetitions, you're gonna be at the 85% of your one RM. At 12 repetitions, you're gonna be at the 67% of your one RM. So how do you calculate your one repetition maximum? There is a protocol, so you're gonna need like a gym buddy or someone at the gym will probably help you. This is the textbook way again, it's a lot, but I wanna share it with you guys just so you can have this resource. So you're gonna first warm up with a light resistance that allows you to do five to 10 repetitions. So say I'm doing bicep curls, I probably start out with like five pound weight. Do five to 10 reps, then I'm gonna rest for a minute. Then, I'm going to increase this weight since it's upper body. I'm going to increase it by 10 pounds. And I'm going to get 15 pounds for three to five reps. Then I'm going to rest for two minutes. Then I'm going to add another 10 pounds. So I'll be at 25 pounds. And I'm going to do two to three reps. Then I'm going to rest for two to four minutes. Then I'm going to add another 10 pounds. So I'll be at 35 pounds. And this is where I'm going to try to do my 1RM. I probably wouldn't be successful, but if I was successful, I do two to four reps. I mean, I do a two to four minute rest. Then I go back to step seven and I increase that weight to like 45 pounds. If I wasn't successful, I do a two to four minute rest and then I decrease that load. So I'd go back to either 30 or 25 pounds. But that is the protocol for testing your one repetition maximum. The way I do it is I do trial and error. So I go to the gym, I pick up a weight. If the weight's too easy, if I complete a set and it was so, so, so easy, I know to up my weight. If I wasn't even able to like do like four reps, I would know, oh my goodness, this is too heavy. Let me go down in weight. It's just basically, if you're doing a set, you want to finish that set with just enough energy and correct form. And it's going to be trial and error. There's going to be days where, you know what, Maybe I did 20 pounds on bicep curl one day, and then I go back like two or three days later, and 20 pounds is way too heavy. Sometimes that happens. It depends on your energy levels, how much food you ate today, but it definitely is trial and error. And I think that way is definitely easier and more realistic.
But if you do want to do the textbook version, here it is. Now, the next variable I think is the most important variable because consistency is key and rest days is very important. So your frequency, how many days a week are you working out a specific muscle group? Well, you're supposed to work out two to three times a week of the same muscle group in order to have muscle growth. And this is because you really need to be consistent in the gym and you need to be working out that muscle two to three times a week, but you do not want to overdo it. These rest days are so important. You need to have like 24 hours between, say I worked out back on Mondays, I'm not going to work out back on Tuesday. I need that 24 hours for my body to recover for my muscle tissue to repair in order to have muscle growth. So you do want to work out two to three times a week, but you want to have rest days and you want to have rest days in between the same muscle group. You do not want to work that muscle group back to back. Your body needs time to heal. So now that we have all the variables, let's go over a training schedule. So this is an example schedule. It's a lot. You would be working out six times a week. It just depends on your training goals, but say I wanted to do my whole body all week, I would start off with legs on Monday, then I would do back and thighs on Tuesday, then I do chest and tries on Wednesday, then I'd rest on Thursday, I'd do legs again on Friday, that is my second time hitting legs, now I'm good, I hit legs twice, I'm going to do back and biceps on Saturday, hit back and biceps twice, and then I'm going to do chest and triceps on Sunday, hitting that muscle group twice too. So you see, I have rest days in between. I'm not working out the same muscle group within, not even within, I wait a long time. You could you could do 24 hours or 48 hours. Typically, if you want more days to rest, because this is a packed week, say you want to just do legs one day and then upper body another day, you do legs, rest day, upper body, legs, rest day, upper body, legs. But you could hit legs. So say I do legs on Monday, I could work it out again on Wednesday or Thursday. Just do not do it back to back is what I'm saying. So there are a lot of rest days between the muscle groups, which is good, but it's completely up to you. This is just an example of schedule. Now let's just sum it up. This will also be in your digital packet, but a resistance workout for hypertrophy is going to be three to six sets of six to 12 reps with a 30 to 90 second rest in between those sets, 67 to 85% of your 1RM or trial and error, which I definitely suggest. And then you wanna work out two or three times a week, which is very, very important for muscle growth. So how do you set up a hypertrophy focused resistance workout? Now we're talking about when you go to the gym, what should you do? What workouts should you do? What order of the workouts should you do? That's what we're gonna get into right now. So exercise order for a hypertrophy focused workout is going to go from core exercises to assistance exercises. What is a core exercise? A core exercise engages large muscles and it should be what's prioritized in the workout. So this is going to be your deadlifts, your squats, your chest press, your lat pull down, your upright rows. And then your assistance exercises are going to recruit small amounts of muscle mass. And these are going to be your like accessory exercises, your supplementary exercises. And this is going to be like your tricep extension, your leg curls, your leg extensions, your bicep curls. But basically, when you do a workout, you want to prioritize the core exercises. So those are going to be your bulk of your exercise. It's going to be, if you're, I personally do six exercises. So out of the six, four exercises are going to be core. Two exercises are going to be assistant. And I'm going to start with the core because they take most of my energy. So I'm going to do core and then assistance. I'm going to focus on more core. So I'm going to do four exercises, whereas assistance, I'm going to do two exercises. And in your digital packet, I have examples of what are core exercises and what are assistance exercises for leg day, for back and by day, and for chest and tri day. Obviously, there are ways to split up a training schedule how you want it. So some days, if you don't want to do it how I do it, where I do legs one day, back and thighs one day, chest and tries one day, you don't have to. You could do chest one day, you could do back one day, or you could do upper body all on one day, legs on one day, or you can split up legs with quads and hamstring. It's totally up to you. You know what? It's a quick Google search. Just be like, is this workout a core exercise? And it will tell you. 
but I do have a lot of exercises on there that are for those days and uh, do specify if they're core or assistance. So here is a hypertrophy focused leg day workout. An example, this workout usually for me, it takes about an hour, sometimes a little longer because I do like to warm up before. I like to activate my glutes. So I'll do some body weight exercises. Then I'll go into my workout and then I'll cool down with a stretch. It's very important to stretch and like a little walk in the treadmill, maybe an incline walk. Um, but here is what I would do. I, I put the core exercises in purple and the assistance exercises in pink. My routine is very simple. I also have an example of my routine with the weight and everything in the digital pocket. But I'm going to do a squat, then I'm going to do a deadlift, then I'm going to do lunges, and then I'm going to do leg press, all four core exercises. And I'm going to do four sets of 12 repetitions for each one. I'm going to do 67% of my one repetition maximum because I'm at that 12 rep range. For me, I wouldn't do that. I would just do the weight I found during my trial and error experience, which I included in the digital packet. Obviously, our weights are going to be different, but that's just the textbook one. It goes with the 12 repetitions. So it's going to be 67% of my one repetition maximum. And then I do take a one minute rest between sets. And then after I complete my core, I'm going to go into my assistance, and that is going to be my leg extension and leg curl. Again, I'm going to do four sets of 12 repetitions. I'm going to do a 12, one repetition, 12 RM. There's no such thing as one repetition maximums when it goes to assist exercises. So you're just going to do 12 repetitions of the weight that you can do for that amount. And then I'm only going to do a 30 second rest between these sets because they typically take less energy out of me and I lift a little bit lower weight for these. So I'm only going to take a 30 second rest between these sets. But my workout is pretty consistent. I don't really switch up. Like if I'm doing squats, I usually do four sets of 12 repetitions and then I'll do that all for deadlifts, lunch, and leg press. I probably wouldn't be like, oh, squat and do four sets of 12 repetitions, then deadlift three sets of 12. Like I usually keep it consistent. Just makes me, it makes my workout flow more. So I typically do it like this. Now that we went over exercise and how to structure it, we have to go into diet. I do not cover that much of diet because I'm not a nutritionist, but I will cover the basics for muscle building. And that is for muscle building, you do want to be in a 300 to 500 calorie surplus. I personally am not in a 300 to 500 calorie surplus. I'm in my maintenance calories. And I think that's totally fine to be in your maintenance calories, but you definitely will see more growth if you're in that calorie surplus. Then you want to eat 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound. So say you're 120 pounds, you want to eat 120 grams of protein. And this is so, so important. Your protein intake is so important when it comes to building muscle. If you're not eating enough protein, you won't see muscle growth. So definitely make sure you're hitting your protein intake. And there's an easy way to track your calories and your macros, like your protein, your carbohydrates, your fat. And that is through this app called My Fitness Pal. It's a very good app. You download it. You take pictures of like QR codes or you just input it yourself and it'll tell you how many, how much protein you ate, how much calories you ate and like how many calories you have left, how many protein you have left to hit your goal. It's a very good app that I definitely suggest it if you want to track it and make sure you're hitting your protein intake. And then the last one is increasing carbohydrate intake on workout days. And this is because when you're days that you work out, you want to have more energy, you want to fuel your body. So definitely increase your carbohydrate intake on workout days. That is the only thing that changes. Your calories don't change, your fats don't change, and your protein doesn't change throughout the week. Only carbohydrates. Make sure you hit that protein intake every single day. But carbohydrates is the one that you change and you eat more on workout days. So we were talking about calorie surplus, but some people don't know what their maintenance calories are. So I included how to calculate your maintenance calories, basically taking consideration your weight, your height, your age, and your activity factor. This is a lot of math. So I did include a calorie calculator online in the digital packet and in the follow-up email where it calculates it for you. And this is just to know your maintenance calories. And if you want to build muscle, consume higher calories, typically 300 to 500 more calories. 
So if your maintenance calories are 2,000 calories, you want to be in that 2,300 to 2,500 calorie range. I personally don't do that. I stick with my maintenance calories, but it's completely up to you. But that is what we talk about with diet. I definitely have more on like what you should eat and like just some examples of foods to eat for protein intake and like good carbohydrates in the digital packet if you want to take a look. But that is basically how you build muscle. You just have to follow the variables for building muscle and the correct diet and you will see growth. So today I want to leave you guys off with a quote. And the quote is, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. So when you start this journey, it is going to be challenging and it's going to be hard and there are going to be days where you don't want to go to the gym. But just remember that it is supposed to be a challenge and you will see results. I promise you, you will. If you do this workout structure and you eat right, you will 100% see results. And if you're a beginner, within three months, you see your most growth in measurements because your body adapts to like this whole new lifestyle. And you see so much growth within three months. Obviously, it doesn't happen overnight but you will see a huge change in your body at that three month mark. And this also goes for, say you're a year or two into working out and you know what, you're going through each day and it's not challenging you and every workout's so easy. That is your reminder to either increase your reps, increase your sets, increase your weight to make sure that those days are challenging you in order to see changes in your body, to see your body fat percentage decrease and your muscle mass increase. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming. I'm so, so, ha so happy that you guys joined today. And I hope you guys had some, I hope you guys had some insight in muscle building and I hope it was very helpful. Thank you guys for coming.